Hello there and welcome to my YouTube channel, Julia McNeil Crafts. So today it's time for another, lo another lovely, I don't know where I was going there, another Dawn and Julia Create. I'm thinking of all these things that I have to say and it's all in my head and it's all coming out of jumble so I am very sorry. <laughs> it's time for another Dawn and Julia Create and it's my turn to pick the challenge and we're going to decorate this MDF clock. So this is a Mad Hatter's clock. Now you don't need to use all the bits. You could sort of be a little bit frugal with your kit and not use all of it. I haven't quite decided whether I'm going to use all of mine or whether I'm going to eke it out and make it go further. But we're going to make an Alice themed one so we're going to team it up with um, the Alicia Harris stamp set and hopefully we'll be going down the rabbit hole a little bit today. So firstly there's some work going on in our street. Um, it's very very noisy out there <laughs> so I'm hoping that's not picked up um, by the camera if it, or the microphone, whatever it is that picks up the uh, sound. Oh, you can tell I've not done this in a while and I'm overtired. So I've got a lovely day ahead of crafting with me. It's currently half past nine in the morning. This is a mixed media project and it's due to be loaded up tomorrow. I was meant to be working on it, but I had a day where I really wasn't feeling well at all. So it didn't happen yesterday. So now we've got the whole day today. So it should be, still be plenty of time, but I will be crafting all day on and off. <laughs> So, um, I can't remember all the things that we're allowed to use. I will just double check. I'll just double check my message to Dawn. So, using the MDF clock, um, the Alicia stamp set, any colouring medium of our choice to colour up our images, acrylic paints, gilding wax, one distress ink, black or white gesso, I've clearly opted for white, <laughs> a black pen, and we can add one other thing of our own choice. Because I know sometimes when we are doing these projects, we're, both of us will kind of go, do you know, if I just had, you know, Dawn might go, if I just had some paper flowers, I bet you she has extra paper flowers. I'm possibly thinking that I might add paper, to be honest, because I'm thinking this is quite a big clock to fill, and some of the um, Curious Wonders paper in the background might be quite nice and might help me build a scene. So I think I might end up opting for paper as my one extra... Um, I don't know. So yeah, that was just to sort of give us both a little bit of leeway while sort of, um, you know, kind of having a similar theme. So we're going to do the boring bit now. We are just gessoing here. Um, I, partly because this is going to take forever and partly because I'm really not sure how much that noise is going to pick up in the camera. I am going to pop you on fast forward for this. I'll pop you on fast forward while I do the first coat, but I'd imagine that we might end up with two or three coats on this. So I will see you in just a moment when we're ready for the next stage. I do want to go with the whole paper idea. I'm just going to try and see. So I'm thinking this one, because it builds a little bit of a scene for us. Um, although I might see if I can get... Yeah, what I might do is try, and I'm going to cut this out so that I can preserve those as embellishments if I add this sheet of paper as my extra sheet of paper. And then I am going to try and have the blue. So that mostly covers it apart from this little bit, but I'm sure we could patch that in with a little bit of ripping and tearing and it'll look absolutely a okay because we've got a spare corner there and a spare corner there, which could then be patched into here, especially if this is then going over it, if that makes sense. Okay, so um, I'm going to need some gesso. Uh, not gesso, gel medium and my scissors which amazingly are still packed <laughs> from when I um, did the TV show so I'm just going to get that and I'll be back in two seconds. I can't find the scissors I want but I have found some scissors so as I said I'm going to preserve these bits as embellishments so let's just get 
put it on here. Do, do, do. Cut that out later. So I'm not sure whether I'll put it on the back or have it on the front and have our Alice standing on front. So what I'm saying is I don't know whether I'm going to put it there or whether I'll put it there. I'm thinking. Hmm. We'll decide. Right. So let's cut that out and then whatever's left of this we have then got to do the background with. And then that now gives me my starting point because that's for colours because I wasn't sure what colours I was going to get used to be honest. So that's now giving me a starting point for that. So I think that way. We'll do it that way and patch this bit in here. So what I'm going to do is grab some gel medium. That's just two. That's just two. Honestly, I think it's going to be the last one to pick up. The gel medium. There we go. Oh, and open nice and easy today. How fortuitous. Okay. So let's get some gel medium on this. Now gel medium, if you're doing mixed media, I said this one seems like it might be all used up. Yeah, I think it might have gone a bit dry on me. I'm going to have to open a new pot. That's not good. Hang on a second. Okay. So we have a new pot of gel medium. And now we can get started. <laughs> so... I am just going to put a thin layer of this all over. Gel medium is your best friend when it comes to mixed media. This isn't the best brush, but at least that's it, like bits of hairs coming off with it. It's not ideal, but thankfully it's a bottom layer and this paper going on top. So we'll get a layer of gel medium over that. And then what did I say I was having about? Here, I think. Oops. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that down and then I'm just going to get my finger and push down on the edge of the MDF. I'm going to push down on that quite hard. It's just lifting ever so slightly there. I don't know if I've got the gel medium quite to the edges because it's I'm feeling it lift slightly. Obviously we don't want that, so let's get that gel medium right to those edges. There you go. So once I do that, I can either just take oops, take a little bit of sandpaper if I still have it. Honestly, all my stuff has gone missing. It's ridiculous. Right, we'll not do it that way because the sandpaper isn't there. <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna grab a little bit of water and I'm just gonna run around the edge of that. And then hopefully that should just be enough for me to come round and pull that off. I will need to go find my sandpaper to make it nice and neat because it will give it a neater finish but it's just going to allow me to tear that off to just the right size and we do have the clock part going on top of it as well see it's coming off nice and easy I probably had my daughter borrow the sandpaper to it's a thing, she's a crafter now as well absolutely well and truly she has her own craft area in her bedroom which quite frankly is nicer than mine right now um yeah but things things very often go missing either that i'll just have to steal it from my husband's diy section so we have options <laughs> so i would be getting a neater job if i was doing that with sandpaper so we've got that and then let's just we'll get a torn torn edge edges down here and as I said that I'll just kind of work work with it um, so I'm going to pop a little bit there I think oh, sorry down the bottom edge a little bit there and then we'll create another piece here so we've actually just ended up creating a little bit of extra texture and detail 
and down here just by adding the torn edges but it's a way that we've managed to get our piece of paper to fit even if it didn't quite so it's all good right let's get that stuck down sorry i feel that this video is very stoppy and starty so far <laughs> it's just it should be right there it should be right there on my desk right so we'll fill that little gap in there and then I will get the sandpaper later and we'll go to that bit later. We'll move on to painting, I think. So then we've got, because I'd sort of taken that bit off there, we've got the nice curve, which actually works really well with the clock. So we'll pop that there like so. So we've got all that patched in. I'm just going to tear that bit there because it looks like quite a hard edge at the minute, which I don't like. There we go. So we've got that there. And then I would do the same trick again, is that I'm going to push down really hard should actually get a sanding block or something. I don't actually own a sanding block, but it's just because my husband's sandpaper is far too accessible, so I just tend to use that. So you just push down really hard, just find the edge like that, and then as I said, with a paintbrush, a few here, I'm trying to find one that's the one I just used. Here it is on my desk. I'm trying to find one that's not glue. Just wet the paper. That's just going to break the fibres a little bit in the paper, just make it a bit more pliable and then we literally just move it around and it just falls off in completely the right shape. As I said, it doesn't matter that it's not perfect in this instance because in this instance what we're going to be doing next is that. So it's going to be covered up anyway. So we've got that and as I said, now that we've got those this over it, you're not going to see that. And then we've got this little cluster of things that we can use for putting our gorgeous Alicia on and building it up to make it very wonderlandy. So, based on the colours of this now, obviously I want this to be a contrast to the background. So we've got greens and teals here, so I think that is what I'm going to go for for painting the rest of it. So, let's get some acrylic paints out. And we can have a start with that. I'll just grab these ones up here. Okay, so as I said, we're going to go for that's like my favourite evergreen. In fact, it's so favourite that last time I was there, I bought a big, I bought a big one of it. So let's get some teals out as well, and put some yellow in to help keep it teal wavelength so I've got a few teals there that are similar so that'll do I'm not sure how much teal I've got there but I've always got my Dina weekly one if needed so let's get started with this I'm just going to use the scrap paper that I've got protecting my desk um, as as well as cat come flying in I'm just hoping she's not come flying in with something I was like hmm, that seemed like quite a fast run <laughs> right So yeah, I'm just going to use my scrap paper that I've got to protect my desk as a palette for just now. Oh, actually, I've got this. It's a sheet of acetate. One day I will die cut this or do something cool with this. So I don't view it as wasted because one day I'll create with that. It'll be a page in a journal or something. Okay. Let's see what brushes we have here. So I'm going to grab this one here and I'm just going to go all over with that. I think with it being Wonderland, we don't need to go traditional clock colour. Now we do, Don and I do this guessing thing every time, but I think probably all of us would say it's faith, ugh, safe to say that Don might probably go black gesso. Sometimes we get it wrong. Sometimes we both got it completely wrong. When we did it at the robots, I think Dawn was convinced I would go white and I was convinced she'd go dark and we actually did it the other way around. So sometimes we surprise each other, but in general, we're pretty good. Alright, so we've got, got that. Now that is cool, but it's very flat for me. I like to build up shades and tones, so I'm just going to take a little bit of yellow and a little bit of teal. And the other thing is we can bring this to life with our gilding wax because for once I actually remembered to put it on the list. That's normally one of those things that I'm like, 
or if I could just have used my gelding wax. It's funny, I use it automatically. Mm, I'm going to have to go out and buy some more tea, I think. I do have a big tub of Dina Wakely stuff. Seems to be at the end of all my pots today. Right. There we go. This is another one that I'll have to replace. I'll have to go and get a big one like I did for my green. So what's this one? This is Vert Blue Iridescent. These two colours are my favourite. I seem to craft with them all the time. Um, especially when it comes to doing like steampunk. That's totally not where I was going with that. I was supposed to be doing that at the edge. But I do think we've got, it doesn't really matter because I should be a bit more aware of that actually. So we're going to be covering that so just as well I made a bit of a mess of that. Right, so what I was trying to do was just put it on the edges over here. So this is all to build depth and of course I will do my final step of introducing a distress ink at the edge as well. And just to give it a bit of life. So I'm going to bring that in. Concentrating on these top bits because these are the bits that are going to be seen. I'm actually doing the blending on the project. Let's get a bit of yellow down the centre of this as well. So basically I've got my lightest point in the centre and then I've got these darker elements coming in the side. But I, I'm also sort of working it so that we've got a smooth, smooth blend. It doesn't really matter too much about the whole light theory of the matter but um, it's just about, I like to have different shades in my work. I don't tend to worry too much about where the light's coming from and stuff like that. I just think having multiple shades in it makes it look better automatically. Also just catching the edges because that is a important thing to do. So let's just grab the edges of this. Like so. Right. Because I will get the edges of this, I'll probably do that with gilding wax in a bit, but I do need to neaten that up, but I'm going to do that a bit later when I'm not worrying about it. Okay, so that bit's a mess, but I don't have to worry because that bit's not going to be seen. So let's just, I'm just going to blend this a bit more, get that green back in that I like. And then get the insides in. You know, this is not at all what I had in my head. Well, I don't really know what I had in my head. I just knew I was wanting to do a clock, but I'd imagined that I'd go like more the whole traditional patina thing that I normally do. But I think with the nod to Alice, that bright and fun and quirky is the way to go. But it was definitely putting the papers in that gave me my starting point. So sometimes when it comes to crafting, just start. You don't actually have to know what you want your finished project to look like before you start. Just start and see what happens. So there we go, we can see that will look a lot neater now. So, um, because again, blending takes time to do it properly, um, I am going to just pop it on fast forward so this doesn't end up being too long. But as I said, what I tend to do is put my base colour down, add the highlight with the lighter colour, add the darker and then sort of blend it together so that we've got a multiple tonal look. So. Yep, I will keep going with that. What I may do though different is I might make the the actual hands a different colour. I might go uh, teal on that as opposed to the lime green. So yeah, I will pop you on fast forward so you can still see it. But um, yeah, I'll see you once we're at the next stage. That is that all painted and dried. It's been a lot later in the day now. It's now quarter to six. <laughs> right, I'm just going to, I couldn't find my sanding paper, but I've got a emery board. And I am just going to neaten up the edges of this paper. Just so that we can have a nice, neat, 
finished. So if you had a sanding block, that would probably be slightly more effective. But you can see what a neat edge that is given. It's like completely seamless to the edge now. So it's a really good way of, at, when you're adding papers to your MDF, it's a really good way of sort of just uh, neatening everything up. Um, so I find you tearing it, then sort of sanding it back like this. I find easier than using scissors or a craft knife as well. So I'm just going to get the remainder of that off and then we'll do a little bit of inking. I've also, I've had a lovely afternoon actually. I've been sat colouring. Um, so I stamped a load of the images out that we're going to use on this project. And um, I've watched a couple of films and just had a lovely afternoon colouring. It's great. This is one of these days where I'm like, ah, this is my work, it's great. <laughs> Sometimes I'm a bit overwhelmed and I have to remind myself, going, oh, I'm crafting for a living and uh, you should be appreciative of that. <laughs> you're not in an office, you're uh, just enjoying playing crafting. Um, you know, I've got deadlines and things, but yeah, it was one of those days where it's like, yeah, it's great. I'm not feeling on top of the world health-wise, but I was just able to just sit, watch a couple of films, do some colouring. All fantabulous. Right, so I'm going to get in and just do a little bit of inking. Because we've gone for blues, I am going to use um, faded jeans as an ink just to sort of add, just, you know me, if I can add extra depth and dimension with colour, I would like to do that. So I'm just going to bring that in. I'm also going to, all the paint work that I've done. So I'm just hoping this is a, doesn't seem an overly juicy ink pad. And considering I said only one distress ink, <laughs> I'm just going to have to deal with the fact that it's not overly juicy. Um, yeah, never mind. These things are sent to try us. Right, so I'm going to carry on doing this. I do believe that when I'm sort of working on things like this, the camera is a, gets a little bit shaky. So I'm just going to do yet another speed up uh, for you. <laughs> and then I will be um, back. I'm just, I can't find my blending mat yet. I'm just wondering if coming in off a slippery surface might work better and it is a bit so I've got a bit of acetate. It's because I've not fully packed from unpacked from being on telly yet. <laughs> I do that, it sits there for weeks and then it gets to the stage of like right okay Julia. Because I've had other jobs to do like packing and I've had some design work to get off so that we're ready for the next launches for the next few months and things so yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like oh I need to craft and nothing's where I want it to be. Right, so as I said, that looks like a big bo bo bobble that, doesn't it? Got a few bits that not quite got off, but yeah. So once again, I'll pop you on fast forward while I just finish inking up the rest of those, and then I'll be back. <laughs> just take what was left on this brush, probably not a lot because it wasn't, it was a very dry distress ink pad but I'm just hoping there might be enough on it just to take away the whiteness of that <laughs> edge of the fussy cutting and then if it's a bit of a blue it ties in with the background a little bit better. So yeah, right, so let's get a little bit of cardboard on the back of her. Hopefully my glue will work. I've just switched to regular glue now because I'm just dealing with paper um, and also it's just a little bit easier than the gel medium. Well she says that that's only if this continues to play ball. 
which to be honest considering on the level of squeezing I'm doing just to get out a little bit not looking overly likely but we'll see how we go <laughs> right let's get Alicia in there and it's just going to end up offering us as I say different heights and dimensions to the project she could actually do an extra bit of cardboard on the head there because there's dimension in front of her with the MDF and then her head sort of bending backwards. Ah oh dear. Come on. I might be going back to the gel medium at this rate. I was just thinking that I was less likely to get my fingers less sticky and things. I might make a slightly neater job with the wet glue but Oh, dirty paintbrush. Right. Okay. So now we have her pop down. And I'm going to give her her hat. So this was part of the Hattie's Clan collection. So although it's Alice, you know, the Hatter has made her a hat. Because <laughs> he loves hatting people. Right, now let's see, so I'm just going to build up the florals and things and just create a little bit of something. I'm not going to overly think any of this, I'm just going to shove it down um, into some sort of arrangement. Okay, let's put another one here. And I'll yeah, start introducing some of the other flowers and some of the teacups and we'll just see where we end up. Okay. Now, what I have done is, so we did, I did cut those and I'll just stack those up and then stick a little flower in it. Let's have those there. It's a random tea party. It's time for a tea party. Let's get another little cup going on up there. Oops. And then I'm going to pop some of these little ones around and about in various places. I'm just going to, I'm just thinking these two could have done with a little bit of cardboard as well. They're sort of sinking in a little bit. That's why I got the cardboard out. Just because we're working on dimension, um, because we've got the dimension down here. Um, what, what am I trying to say? Because yeah, because we've got the level of the MDF, um, it's it's kind of creating funny angles. Whereas the um, me putting the cardboard down is just sort of leveling up the playing field a little bit, so that it's becoming nice and even. So if I do that, then those flat yeah. See now those flowers are even with the edge, and we can start building things up a little bit more sensibly. Pop a few little flowers down. Kind of want our toes covered a little bit, so I'll pop two down. Don't know why, I just do. Um, do I want another teacup there? Why not? Why not? Okay. Then I'm going to pop a few here. So we'll see what we've got up here. We'll probably need to do something similar with um, evening up with the cardboard again. I love this stage when it all just, com oh, all just comes together. Very curious to see what Dawn's done. looking forward to having it. I think I can actually watch at six o'clock this time, which is fab. The past few times it's like we've been out or doing stuff and it's like I've had to catch up later. But I think actually we might have a sort of night in on Saturday, which means I'll be able just to watch it as it goes live. Okay, put a teacup up here as well, because why not? 
Let's have teacups everywhere. <laughs> I love teacups. Down a little bit so we're still seeing a little bit of the greenery. And then let's just pop another couple of these little doodaddy ones. right yet and I'm not sure why. Um, do we need another? I'm going to put some up here and I want to put a little bit up there as well. So the reason being I like that the opposite corners but to bring everything right down and sort of tie this in I kind of want a little bit of embellishing up here as well. So I'm going to do the same I've got another teacup, so let's go with that theme. We'll pop a little flower in as well, because that's cute. It's mostly because I've cut the little steam and the the, uh, the heart off, because I couldn't be bothered doing all that fussy cutting. <laughs> and that's when I've left with these cups looking a bit funny, so we've got flowers in them instead. But I think that works. Okay. So we've got a little trail coming down there. There was a funny edit there. I am sorry the camera suddenly stopped recording because um, I had used up all the space on my card. So I had just uh, glued that. I just moved that across a little bit and then I've put the three flowers there so we've got the three. So I think I'm happy with that now. I've just inked up my sentiment um, which is Life Needs More Sweet Tea and Sunshine. And I'm just going to put that somewhere on here like so yeah, I think I'm just going to pop it down the bottom there I was thinking of splitting it up cutting it down into three different bits and putting that across um, but I think actually just along there would work Trying it out in different. Oh, maybe up there. Decisions. Right, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna try splitting it up now. And I think it's more sweet tea. Ooh, decisions, decisions. Oh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah, maybe, maybe well, maybe go with that. <laughs> Faffing so much over the sentiment. Oh dear, steady dear. Well, the good news is that it is now seven o'clock. I have done stuff in between. There's been like layers to dry, so it's like I've been doing different work in between. But I do actually have time to watch this through and edit it and hopefully get it all uploaded tonight so that I'm not sort of running around the last thing on Saturday. Like I quite often am. There we go, so we'll pop that and then I think I just need to get black pen out and do a little bit of a doodly border around the edge of the clock just to frame it and draw the eye in, all of that malarkey do I need to? Hmm. Possibly. Let me have a look. Let's glue this down first. <clears throat> So this does, the gel medium does work as a wet glue. To be honest, I think it would be better with just my wet glue for these particular bits. But I do like to prefer the gel medium when I'm putting all the MDF bits together because as I said, that will just keep it together more permanently. Right. So, 
got that. We're on the home straight, definitely. I think I'm just going to get my marker pen and just edge in section of this mini circle. I think it will just provide a little bit of framing. I wasn't going to do that at all, I was just going to leave it, but old habits die hard. There we go. Right, I am just going to clear my desk a second and give you a closer look. Okay, so here is my project all finished. So we've got Alice in a gorgeous clock. So that is that all finished. Thank you so much for watching. Please do pop across to Dawn's cha uh, channel and see how she's approached the challenge. Can't wait to see what she has done. If you have enjoyed it here, please do consider liking and subscribing. And I will be back with some more crafty goodness very, very soon. Okay, take care then and goodbye.